Hey everybody, this is Cedric from 3D Bandit and welcome to this exciting tutorial on how to make scratches. This is all procedural, no images used, no pixels to fumble with, this is all with cycles procedural rendered. This has many um, implementations, like if you want to have scratches on metal, if you want to have scratches on wood, if you want to have scratches on chrome, or even if you want to have lighter scratches, or even more scratches, it can all be achieved using this technique. So let's jump right into it. Oof. Okay, so uh, I've got some uh, basic, uh, a basic uh, sh shader environment up here. Um, if you want to see, uh, if you want to see how to get this kind of, uh, well, preview, uh, go and check out Cinecat Pro's channel. Uh, he has a tutorial on that, and he has a lot of cool tutorials on PBR. Uh, that's physical, physically based rendering for you. Um, so check out his channel, he's awesome. Um, so yeah, let's check out how to do scratches. So this technique is kind of uh, fumbly because I, well, let me show you. Um, first thing I want to do is bring a moose grave texture. Moose grave, moose grave, moose gravy. This will of course give us um, the moose grave texture. Uh, I want to bring up the scaling a bit, and uh, I'll uh, the detail to its fullest, bring the dimensions down, uh, about this, yeah, and uh, the lacunity a bit up, and then we get like this very detailed dirt kind of texture, and yeah, we can leave the rest as it is. Um, just keep it on FBM, it'll be nice. Okay, so I'm going to click this and click Ctrl T to get my mapping notes automatically. That's with the um, Node Wrangler uh, add-on. And then we want to duplicate this. And I'll show you why in a second. Oh yeah, and we want to put this on object. We want to put a vector on object, right? Uh, because of reasons. Um, so, now we want to do something funky. We're going to bring in a wave texture, which gives us this. Um, kind of Bring down the scaling a bit. Uh, yeah, we don't need anything else really. Do we want to? Nah. I don't know. All these things, it doesn't matter. Uh, I can just put it on zero. Um, <laughs> so yeah, uh, we want to put the first mapping into this one actually and just disconnect it from the moose gray for a second. And what we'll want to do is use the waves texture to actually give a vector uh, distortion to the moose graph texture. So we're gonna use the mapping of the wave texture to actually change the rotation of the scratches, like you can see. If we move this a bit, yeah. And we want to move, the, uh, we want to use this mapping to uh, actually get the vector for the moose graph texture and influence with the wave texture. If that makes sense, so we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna use the converter, the separate x y z. This will separate your vector. Um, yeah, to show you what it does, it actually gives you the x vector, the y vector, and the z vector. So a bit straightforward. Uh, and what we want to do actually is bring in a combine x y z, and um, Get these two in and put them on a vector. Now let me check the moose graph. This is really distorted. This is not really what we want. But if we bring in the wave texture, the vector in the Y, we get scratches. They kind of look a bit strange now. But uh, what we can do is actually bring in a color ramp and pump up the black like this. And now we have scratches. So, that's, uh, that's how you get one layer of scratches. You can use this to, um, for instance, put this in the height. And then we get some normals. Oh, we need to invert this. Yeah. You can put this in here and in here and in, oh, and in here. And as you can see, we already have our first layer of scratches. So, uh, yeah, we push the strength down a bit. Yeah, so it already, already looks cool and all, but uh, 
can increase the things here. But scratches don't only go in one direction. They do in fast objects and stuff, so you can use this and all. Um, but what we actually want to do is create different layers of um, of these scratches to actually get scratches in different directions. Um, you will also see that kind of gets distorted around the bottom and stuff. So, how are we going to do this? Well, my first instinct would be to group this and actually just copy the group. But as uh, the value we need to change is the rotation of the waves, of the wave mapping, and we cannot, um, I cannot input values in this in groups. So for instance, if I group this uh, and I want to have a value here, it's impossible. It's kind of sad. I want I want to see that fixed. Uh, if somebody knows how to do this, please tell me, because I don't. And okay, wait. How do I ungroup this? Come on, come on. Ah, oh, here we go. So what, what we have to do, and it's kind of sad that we have to do this, but we have just shift D it. Um, what you can do is just uh, press H uh, and scale this down. Uh, make it a little bit more less well uh, just like less taking up less space okay sorry for that <laughs> um, so yeah what we're gonna do now is just rotate it uh, without getting too much distortion like this um, and then just put in a color mix RGB add I'm gonna put this in here I'm gonna put this in here. Just gonna check real quick if I'm still recording. Yeah, <laughs> always important. And if we add this, we actually get scratches in different directions. So you could stop here, but now you see like it's in two directions. Kind of looks like crosses. It almost looks like a digital raster. You can already achieve cool results with that, but uh, we want to go a step further, don't we? So what you can do then is uh, yeah, scale this down. Yeah, you can just use the scale function in the node editor, which is really nice. And I want to duplicate all of this. Press H, uh, press H again, scale it a bit up. And now we want to see if we can get some horizontal action in there. Yes, we can. It's a bit fumbling with the rotations to get a result without too much distortion in the object, because now we can see here it's a bit of distortion. But, uh, yeah, it's kind of inevitable sometimes with certain objects. But I think this will work pretty fine. And then we'll check this one. And oh, well, uh, and then Blender crashed. So yeah, uh, <laughs> welcome back. I don't know what happened there. Well, I do kind of know. Um, Blender crashes from time to time over here whilst I'm doing notes. It's really irritating. I don't know why it does it. Um, it doesn't also give me some kind of crash report, which is not very nice. Let's check this one. It's always when I fumble around with the notes that I get these kind of errors. I want to save this more often. <laughs> so okay, now we created the vertical and horizontal notes, and uh, now we want to. No, we don't want to unhide these. We just want to unhide the mix. Copy it. Oh yeah, be sure you put the factor because one of the scratches are less bright than the other. You want to actually put this on add and put this on full. So don't forget that. Put this on add and put it on full. I mean, I guess you could leave it on uh, um, mix, but well, I like it on add because if you keep on mixing, you get darker and darker stuff, and then, you, know, you don't want that. So one problem we have now is um, these little stars. Uh, this is because the Musgrave texture doesn't have a proper offset and keeps his generated textures at the same spot and you just get distorted in different directions but they all have the same like center point which is not very nice so the thing you want to do is just offset the um we've got a bottom mapping there for the musgrave texture and we just want to offset the texture a little 
Um, and if we do this for all of the, I'm just gonna. Mm, so it's kind of checking where everything is. And rotate this. I don't know if that's gonna do something. But oh yeah. So if you rotate this a bit, it'll be a bit offset. Uh, so yeah, now you've got more uh, random scratches, which is good. So if if you pick all this, let's save real quick before it crashes again. Put it in the uh, in the bump map, and you put this on. We'll see. We have all kinds of different scratches, which is really nice. Uh, one extension that you can do with this is just going to mix shader um, and put this also in as the factor of that mix shader and just pick the glossy for instance here and have a different shader for the textures. You can also combine this with the pointiness value to give more scratches on, uh, here we go, to have more scratches on the um, edges and less in the crevices like in the example uh, but it's all just like a little bit of details you can check out other tutorials uh, from 3d bandit to check out them features and combine them uh, yeah the thing i did with the example as well is copied all of this stuff again and did a little bit more randomness in the rotation because you can kind of see the vertical and the horizontalness still a bit i mean a could rotate it a bit. Oh, look, this looks a lot better already. Uh, so this kind of gets dirty in a while. I mean, just to show you, this is my eventual uh, mapping notes. As you can see, it's very chaotic. But well, it works. It makes nice textures. Well, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I'm Cedric from 3D Bandit. Uh, like and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you next time.